Hey there, are you looking forward to starting your very own model car collection? If you're new to the hobby, allow me to briefly introduce you to the world of model cars and give you some tips and points that might help you on building your own collection. Hi, my name is Zephyr Chung with Iris Diecast. I am a model car collector in South Korea who mainly focuses on 118 scale model cars although I do buy some Tomicas and Hot Wheels from time to time. I've always liked cars, and naturally, I enjoy toy cars uh, from a very early age. All of my gifts were toy cars, but I really started collecting in an organized manner um, back in 2011 when I was in elementary school. I bought two 118 scale Maisto Audi R8s, which I still have to this day, and from there I started my 10-year voyage of um, collecting model cars. As of June 2021, I have 128 118 scale model cars, around 370 Hot Wheels, uh, and 130 Tomicas, and a couple dozen of miscellaneous cars. I have organized this video into two parts because it might get too long so i'll produce two videos for this series and maybe a couple more spin-off videos if i need more explanation the first part will be a brief introduction about the hobby of collecting model cars and the second part uh, will be some tips and advices uh, i don't have the biggest collection i'm not the most experienced collector either some of the things I say in the video may be subjective, and I'm pretty sure there are a lot of things that collectors and will-be collectors uh, may disagree about. I just want to say that I'm not trying to push an agenda or trying to raise an argument. I'm just merely pointing out how I collected cars in the last decade and merely suggesting it as something to refer to. The introduction got too long. Let's get started. You may all have different reasons for why you are trying to start a collection. You may be rest uh, restarting a toy car collection from your childhood. Maybe you fell in love with some model cars you saw at a store. Um, maybe your acquaintance, or maybe for the sport, etc. But if you're new, you'll soon realize that there's so much to the model car world um, from the size, the price, the scarcity, uh, manufacturer, so much more. So let's get started with perhaps the most important part of all, the size. So in the model car world, we measure the size of our cars in terms of scale, which is basically the proportion your model car is downsized compared to the actual car. For example, 118 scale would mean that your car's length uh, width and height is 1 18th of the real car. So some of the more common scales are 112, 118, 124, 138, 143, and 164. So the bigger your numbers are, the smaller your cars get. Um, for example, 124 is smaller than 118, uh, 138 is smaller than 124, and so on. So how big are they really? Well, it varies a lot on the type of the car. I mean, obviously, a Volkswagen Bug would be smaller than a, a Lincoln Town Car Limousine, uh, even if it's the same scale. But 118 cars, uh, like this Ferrari 360 Medina there, are mostly around 20 to 30 centimeters long. Um, then the uh, 124 scale cars, which is this Mercedes-Benz GLK here, uh, they're usually uh, around 13 to 17 centimeters and 138 scale like this Porsche Speedster here uh, they're usually around 9 to 12 centimeters uh, 143s are slightly smaller around 7 to 10 uh, centimeters like this Lamborghini Miura here uh, 164s are usually around 4 to 6 centimeters like this uh, 57 Corvette here um, the typical Hot Wheels and Matchbox, like this Hot Wheels P1 here, they're around that size. Uh, here is a computer mouse for the sake of um, size comparisons. 
Um, 112s are really, really big, like 40 to 50 centimeters long. Um, and you can tell that the size difference gets smaller as the scales go down because, well, um, mathematics. The scale of the model car matters a lot because depending on your uh, scale, your model car may be solely aimed for collectors or um, may be also aimed at the toy market as well. Um, so I'm generalizing things a lot, but 112 and 118 scales are mostly collector items. 143 and 164 are a mixture of the two, and other scales are usually aimed at the toy market. Normally, you get more opening parts and detail on bigger models, so keep that in mind when you're choosing uh, which scale you want to collect. 112s are uh, usually really expensive and their variety is limited, so a majority of the collectors um, collect 118s and 143s, uh, and while the 164 market is getting bigger, a lot of the collectors uh, of the 164 scales are collectors of uh, Hot Wheels, Matchbox, and um, Tomica cars. So whichever scale you pick is fine, but keep in mind that the um, more demand there is, there's going to be uh, more various products that you can choose from. Uh, I collect 118, so the rest of the video uh, and the information, the tips I'll give, will be based on the 118 scale. Now that you have chosen which size you want to collect, let's look at the price of the models. Now the price um, is different even within the same scale, um, and the differences are really, really huge. Um, sometimes a smaller scale model may cost multiple times more than a larger scale model, um, so why is that? Obviously, you don't need me to tell you that the quality differs, we all know that. The real question is, what do uh, more expensive cars have over the cheaper cars? Here I have some um, two Lexus sedans. They're not the same model, um, but to give you the general idea, the one on the left is made by AutoArt. Um, it's one of the more expensive cars, and the one on the right, the uh, LS430, is made by a budget brand um, called Motormax. Maybe you can tell the quality difference at first glance, maybe not. Um, I'll cover more specifically in a different video, but expensive cars typically have a more accurate casting, um, better finishing, they consist of more parts, and they have more detail to them. Um, sometimes they use uh, expensive materials like aluminum, um, carpet, leather, carbon fiber, and etc. While cheaper cars usually have big chunk of parts um, made out of plastic. Uh, cheaper cars can be bought um, under $50 uh, or less um, in the United States. Or you can even get them at a really cheap price like $20 in large retailers like Costco's and Sam's Club in the United States. And uh, if a model exceeds 150 US dollars, it is usually considered a higher-end model. Now, let's talk about the model car manufacturers and relate them to the prices that we just mentioned. Um, now, model car brands have a specific range of price that their models um, fall into, just like real cars. At the same size, Mercedes, Lexus, and BMW produce more expensive and upscale cars than Chevy, Ford, and Hyundai. Um, so uh, let's start with the uh, cheaper brands. These brands' products are usually sold for less than 50 US dollars. Um, they are Maisto, Burago, Welly, Motormax, and Mondo Motors, uh, Jetta, etc. Uh, I have written the names in the description, so um, check it out for spelling. So, uh, a brief brief introduction of the brands. You'll probably encounter a lot of Maisto and uh, Barago cars. The uh, Bugatti Chiron Sport, uh, over there on the left, is a Barago. And the, um, the uh, all-new Audi R8, it, that's a Maisto. Uh, they have a huge lineup from classics, SUVs, everyday, muscle, supercar, they have all. 
Um, they have pretty neat quality and they are mass produced, so they are pretty easy to find. Um, these are really, really great models for a beginner collector for so many reasons. First of all, the cars are very durable, um, so they are easy to maintain. Um, expensive models uh, have more parts, and more parts mean that there is an increased risk of breaking the model. Um, but these cars, they're very um, durable, and uh, if you're a beginner collector, you may want to collect these um, until you get the hang of it because, um, <laughs> well, you don't want to break your $200 uh, brand new out of art car. One of the uh, other reasons that these cars make good beginner items is because you don't need to go to a model car store um, or buy one from the internet. You can find these at your local retailers um, like Sam's Club and Costco for a significantly lower price. Um, it was $13 when I lived in the United States, but um, it's probably still under $20, US um, which is a really, really great deal. Well, at least in the United States, to sell them. Um, in Korea, they don't. Besides, um, Virago has an exclusive license to Ferrari. So if you're a Prancing Horse fan, well, you really have no other choice for newer Ferraris. Maisto and Barago are a part of the same group today, um, the Meichung group. But uh, a couple of decades ago, Barago was an Italian brand, so um, you may find some interesting quirks and features there. Um, Motormax and Mondo is a brand that I normally don't recommend. Um, the BMW M3 is a uh, Motormax and the Reventon is a Mondo. Um, their cars are not as mass-produced as Maestro and Barago, um, so they are a little bit harder to find. You'll probably have to visit a hobby store um, or order one from the internet. They are slightly expensive than Maestro and Barago, but they usually have like really, really bad quality, probably one of the worst. Um, but Motormax has a pretty neat collection of classic American cars, so if you're into that, um, they could be a pretty nice option. Welly probably makes the uh, best cars in the price range. Um, they also have a pretty neat uh, selection of everyday European cars, like this uh, Volvo XC90 uh, here. They're a great brand, um, but they're a little bit harder to find um, than Maestro and Barago. Um, and Jada is basically a toy car company. Um, they made this uh, like in Hypersport. They're, a, they're slightly bigger um, than the other cars and uh, are oftentimes customized in stock. Um, they do feature a lot of movie cars and customized cars, so um, still check them out. Of course, there's more brands, but um, these are the most well-known and common. Uh, the thing about these so-called budget cars is that they're not all that well detailed and they show a lot of um, shortcomings. So you really get what you pay for. So if you have really high expectations, you may not find these models satisfying. In the mid price range, you have Norev, uh, Ertl, GD Autos, Hot Wheels Elite, um, Paragon, and iScale. Um, they usually go around uh, 80 to uh, 150 US dollars. Um, they pack more detail and um, usually they can satisfy the meats of a higher taste collector. I don't really have a lot of cars in this range. I have a Erdo Land Rover Discovery and a Hot Wheels Elite Ferrari Testarossa. Um, Norev is a French brand that makes uh, Pretty nice European cars. Nowadays, they've been making a lot of the Mercedes dealer edition cars. Erdl is actually at the lower spectrum. I've um, I've considered for a while whether to put Erdl um, in the lower range or the mid range. Uh, their cars certainly pack more detail um, than cheaper cars, but uh, they, they still lack the finishing to be really considered a nicer brand. Um, they do have a huge selection of American muscle and classics, so this can be a great alternative to uh, Motormax. 
GT autos um, and FX models, they're an upscale welly. Uh, not too various models, but they still have pretty neat quality and uh, acceptable price. Paragon um, mainly produces BMW models. Uh, they pack plenty of detail and looks pretty nice. iScale also makes pretty neat cars. Um, these two are relatively newer brands. Um, Hot Wheels Elite um, is a upscale version of the regular Hot Wheels. Um, yes, there is Hot Wheels, Hot Wheels Elite, and Hot Wheels Super Elite. Regular Hot Wheels are just basically considered a, a lower budget model, but the Elite is pretty neat. Um, so if you like Ferrari, you'll probably get to own one of these um, someday. Hot Wheels used to have an exclu exclusive license to um, Ferrari, um, so that's why. Finally, at the uh, top of the pyramid, we have Auto Art, uh, Mini Champs, Kyosho, LCD, and Almost Real. Um, these cars provide exceptional quality, and their prices range from over 150 US dollars to sometimes over 300. So, Auto Art, um, which made this Maybell 57 here, um, is a brand that most collectors will um, encounter eventually. They are considered one of the best model car manufacturers. They have a really huge lineup. I own a Maybell, um, XKRS, and Impreza in Alexis. Nowadays, they've been cost cutting a little bit. Um, they use ABS copolymer for most of their cars instead of die cast metal. Mini Champs is a uh, also a nice brand. They are generally considered to be a little bit worse than the outdoor art. Kyosho is a Japanese band. Um, I have this Lancia uh, Integra LA. Um, they make Rolls Royce cars, so if you want them, you have to get a Kyosho someday. Uh, they also have a pretty neat selection of Audi and BMW cars. Um, they are known to have a paint job quality issue on a lot of their cars. Um, LCD and Almost Real are two new Chinese companies. They don't hold the same reputation um, as an outdoor model, but they come with a high level of detail that are just as good or better than outdoor or Mini Champs cars. Some super expensive brands would be Exoto, um, CMC, and BBR. Their cars use prestige materials like real leather and wood, and they provide unbelievable detail. Their cars uh, usually go around at least 300 US dollars and can go up to 500 US dollars or more. In the resin world, you have uh, TSM, GT Spirit, and Automobile in the lower price spectrum, uh, make up M uh, MR and PBR in higher price cars. Um, um, <clears throat> now, you've probably heard me say the word resin, um, and I think now is a good time to talk about the material of your model cars. Um, there are three main materials, um, die-cast metal, ABS, copolymer, and resin. Um, all of my cars are die-cast. Um, I don't have any ABS or resin cars. So die-cast is a mixture of aluminum, lead, tin, and zinc. Uh, many brands from Maisto uh, to Auto Art use this material because it's metal, so it feels like a real car. Um, it's heavy, it's easier to mass produce, and they are durable. Resin models are usually made by hand, so they are less durable and harder to mass produce. So many of the resin models you'll find are limited edition, just fun marketing. They usually don't have opening parts, so if you want to see the interior and the engine bay and all of that in your model car, you're probably better off the diecast model. ABS copolymer is a material that Autoart is using a lot lately. Um, think of Legos, it's similar to that. It's cheaper and it is easier to make a more accurate casting but they're lighter and they feel really, really, you know, cold like plastic. They're also prone to um, discoloration, just like um, the white Lego. They're also less durable, so sometimes um, they come with less parts, like less opening parts. Um, 
many models have metal frames and ABS copolymer um, for parts like bumpers, but Autor has been taking the use of um, ABS copolymer to an expanded level, which is also the reason why um, some people have higher hopes for um, new brands like LCD or Almost Real because they use diecast metal. Um, so how do you buy these model cars? With the exception of Maisto, Burago, uh, and maybe some other cheaper diecast cars, you won't be able to find most of them at the grocery stores like Walmart or Target. Because, well, they're not aimed for the toy market. Hobby stores may hold them, but unless it's a really big store, they may not hold the model you want. Um, for many models, internet is usually the way uh, most people get their cars. Um, I suggest model diecast, uh, diecast model wholesale. If you live in North America, uh, it's not an ad. I've never shopped there before because I live in South Korea. Um, but they have a huge variety and their prices are, well, not cheap, but they're not a ripoff. Um, of course, for some discontinued models and um, rare cars, you'll have to search eBay for online hobby stores and private sellers. So last but not least, let's talk about the, the display and maintenance of the model cars. Um, if you uh, collect 1ET model cars like I do, then space will become a critical issue like real quick. Um, there are several ways you can display your cars. Um, usually they are an open display area, uh, glass display cases, or you just keep them in their packaging. Around one third of my cars are displayed um, in an open shelf like the, this. Uh, the problem with displaying cars like this is that the dust, um, the dust gets to the car so they get um, dirty real quick. And while I do that, while I do clean them um, regularly around uh, once in two, two weeks, uh, it can be a real no nuisance trying to clean the uh, interior or some uh, small, small uh, holes that are really um, hard to clean. Another problem uh, with displaying cars in an open uh, shelf like this is that um, if you're keeping the box to hold the value of your model cars, then you're basically um, wasting two spaces, one for your car and the other for your um, box. So that's a pretty inefficient use of space. Um, on the bright side, the uh, strengths would be that you can easily access and appreciate your cars. I mean. I look at these cars all day. <laughs> um, I usually just keep the ones that don't have their original packaging here. And um, as for the rest of them, uh, I keep them in their original uh, packaging like this. These are not all of them, but um, uh, around two thirds of my models are uh, stored away like this. Uh, or if they don't have their original packaging, I just wrap them up and keep them keep them um, in cardboard boxes. Uh, the strength of displaying cars like this is that um, you can you can use your space more efficiently because you only need one space for both of your um, car and the box. Also, you don't need to invest in a display case or a shelf or anything. So just your car. There's no other investment needed. Um, than your car. But the problem is that um, aside from some of the models, it's really hard to access or look at your cars. I mean, the cars in the back, I can't really um, see them. It's just like their storage or something. And even if I can see them, if I want to take them out and, I don't know, maybe make a video or perhaps look at the interior, I have to open it, take off all the screws, put it back. It's a lot of work. Um, last but not least, you can get a glass display case um, with a um, glass door to keep the dust from getting to your cars. They don't cost a lot more than the um, these shelves, so a lot of professional um, collectors use them. Uh, if, you're, if your shelves are full, then it may be a pretty good idea to um, get one. The strengths and weaknesses are basically the same as an open shelf, except for the fact that um, 
uh, you get more defense from the dust. Uh, you can easily access your cards and look at them, but then again, you have to um, keep your boxes elsewhere, so storage becomes a pretty big problem. So that's it, my brief introduction to the hobby of collecting model cars. So if this video is aimed to be more um, informative, my next video, the part two, will be a little bit more subjective, you know, about making decisions and um, what to prioritize and stuff like that. Uh, I hope this video was of help for those who want to start this hobby. Um, if I'm missing on something, leave in the comments. I'll try to cover them in a future spin-off video. Um, anyways, thank you guys uh, so much for watching the video. If you've liked it, please click like and um, subscribe to the channel. Um, if you didn't, give me a thumbs down. Tell me what I should be working on. Um, and well, I'll see you guys in part two then. Uh, thank you.